Boys and girls, man and woman. Are you a new player in EVE Echoes and want some inspiration on how to fit a Vexor? Or have you played a while and want to improve your Vexor Sniper? Or have you played a long time and want to support this video while I talk about the expensive Vexor 2 that you just lost? Either way, thank you. The Vexor is a special ship in my heart. It was one of the first ships that I got beaten by in EVE Online since I went for the Amar Omen one. This kiting or brawling speedy or stingy cruiser in EVE Echoes is a good choice for the ISK. There are a few variants and I will talk about which one are good for the buck and good for the purpose. I would want to start with a normal Vexor or Vexor Trainer but the Vexor Trainer for 3 million is just as good as the normal Vexor for 10 million. The biggest change is the extra low slot the Vexor have. Which is big in itself, but if you are tech 5, it's better to go for the Vexor right away. I would do some more grinding with Tristan, or ask a corp mate to support you with 7 or 8 million. It's not much for a well established corp, so just be a nice corp mate and you most likely will be granted this ship. The fits we will talk about will work for all types, and it's mainly the low slots that will change, but I will get to that. So let me start with the first real ship, the Vexor Navy, and this is mine. Alright, this is my basic fitting. Since this ship is normally not a tanky ship, you will go for speed, so... I of course have a medium afterburner here. That makes my ship go a bit over 1200 something. I got two invulnerability fields, and I have a large shield booster. Now the way I use my shield booster here is that I pulse it, so I don't keep it active all the time, because you will not have capacitator for that. The fit does work with a medium booster as well and that will in one way make it easier if you're a bit more AFK but this is not an AFK ship unless you fly for example the sniper I will talk about that in a bit and the basic layout is of course drones it doesn't matter uh, you pick the drones that you can afford but of course a tech level that matches your tech level if possible on this fit I have a target painter it does give you a little bit more DPS or it's more like the drones hits a little bit better which in terms give you more DPS. I have a medium Nosferatu which helps me with some cap mainly for kiting and I have a Weber just in case. On the high slot I use missiles and this is all up to you. You can use pretty much whatever you like. I would not go for close range so snub noses is not really what I would go for with this fit and missiles always hit you know. They do hit less on faster targets. Now on uh, rigs on this one, I don't actually fly this one, so as you can see, but you will go for um, drone scope ship for um, better application with the damage, and of course a damage rig. Now this is basic rigs. You will of course go for better rigs if you are gonna use this ship as your main income. And if you are T5, and this is pretty much your first ship. You don't actually need to put anything on engineering rigs. You could take some of the freebies that you have. A little bit more capacity. Uh, maybe some speed if you'd like to. I would probably go for something basic as flight velocity adjustments maybe. 6% here. The second one will be diminished so you will get about 3% which doesn't really help. Uh, you could go for a polycarbon here inertia modifier instead and this will make your ship a little bit more agile which is always nice because then you can orbit at closer range without losing too much speed so here you got a basic uh, pve fit for doing some anomalies now depending on what you can change is dependent on your skills so if you do some encounters with this fitting and you see that you don't get any damage at all for example you could remove one more resistance or you could downgrade your uh, shield booster and you can then instead get some more drone damage on low slots to make you clear the encounters even faster and if you would like to go pvp with a ship like this i would actually keep the low slots as it is this will make you quite tanky and i would change my target painter into a warp disruptor and the reason for a warp disruptor instead of a warp scrambler is because you want to have some range the longer range you can kite at eh, the better but this is a very cheap one it's about two million and you can kite at 27 kilometers and that means that you are safe from the enemy's webifiers which is the thing that you need to avoid if you get webbed in this ship you will go down so make sure you have a disruptor and be orbiting at max range 
I would keep the NAS on this fit, because depending on how long the fight is, this NAS can actually help you boost a couple of more times and hopefully you will win the fight. Now the second way to make this into a PvP ship is actually to remove this low slots here. And you instead use an MVD. Now this MVD makes you go a lot faster. And the idea here is that you will never get in range of the Webers, ever. And just like the large shield booster, you will just pause this. You will use it and then you will turn it off. And you will use it and you will turn it off. And the reason for that is when you use the micro warp drive, not only will your flight velocity be a lot faster, but your signature radius will also be a lot bigger. So that's why you don't want to use that all the time. Now what I would also have is a medium afterburner. Now this one should be active all the time. Pretty much all the time. And depending on the target, like if it's a really fast target, you will use the micro warp drive more. But if it's a slow target that has a hard time hitting you, then maybe you can run with just afterburner. And the last slot, I would use a medium shield booster. This is just to be tanky. You can, you can tank a little bit here and there. Pretty much if you fail, like if you come in the wrong direction or if he slingshots you or whatever, then you can use the booster to not just die. But this is also a very, very nice fit. It's, uh, it's a lot harder to run it, but you get more control over the fighting area. And you can also build this as a brawler. Now I changed up the fitting a little bit. We we'll go with an afterburner, invulnerability field and a cap battery and a medium booster. And we changed the medium slot into a uh, newt. And this is going to make you destroy the other player's capacitor. And destroying other player's capacitor in this game can be vital. This is also a pretty decent build. You will go close. Well, you will go close enough for the neutralizer to work at least. But this fit does work. I wouldn't say it worked as good today since so many people have great capacitor on their ships. But this was very uh, normal back in the day when we played. Now the Vexor Navy issue is a great ship for check level 6. You do not have that much money that early in the game. But I mean, if you can get it, it's, it's a good ship. It's a very versatile ship that you can use either for PvP or for PvE. But of course, when you're tech 8, you have a little bit more money. You can probably get into a Vexor Sniper. Now this Sniper has one drone less. But you do 25% damage instead of 12 or 13, 12. So pretty much you do four and a half drones instead of five. But you also have a sniper mode that I will talk about. And adding to that, you have one more low slot. So if we go back to our ship, you get one more low slot on this one, for example. You could easily have a second invulnerability field here and still have this set up. Or you can change the newt into NAS again. And you can remove the battery. And you can easily change back into a large uh, shield booster. Oh wait, I think it's easy if I do this. Large shield booster, medium afterburner, medium cap battery, and two invulnerability fields. So with that extra low slot, you can actually have your large shield booster to be active more than just pausing it. You will be able to use this booster for a lot longer. Let me show you what the sniper does. Undocking. Now as we undock here, you can see that the apocalypse mating it right now. So let's just let nature prevail so we can get some more of those omen ships that can maybe grow up and be apoxes too. But anyway, down in the corner here, you have an extra button. That is the sniper mode. And if we look at, and this is just a basic drone, you can see that you got drone command range. You got the orbital speed, you get the flight velocity, you get the accurate fall off, you got the optimal range. You can see the DPS. The DPS is 8254. The drone range is 49. And that's going to change. Because when you activate sniper mode, you're going to do less DPS, but you will be able to command your drones in a lot longer range. So 74 kilometers. And this, of course, make this ship into a sniper. So you can warp in on encounters a lot further away. And you can send your drones, which are very, very quick. And you can just start moving in a diagonal pattern or whatever just to keep range from the rats and not even get hit. So that is what the sniper does. It's a very cool option. And of course, if you want to go for an, an encounter sniper fit, and this is how I would have fit in my sniper encounter Vexor sniper fit. That's a mouthful. Two damage modifier, one afterburner, 
one invulnerability field and one medium shield booster just just because you might need it um, it's just in that case now you most likely will not get damaged at all of course four drones on the medium slots i would go two target painter to apply as much damage as possible and of course a web of fire just in case and for me i go for missiles on high slot now the rigs i've not rigged this one because i don't actually use this ship but low slot i will go damage full damage for drones to so drone speed and drone damage applications and on medium slots i would probably go maybe one targeting rig and two speed rigs uh, so i can fly a bit faster that is it this is how you fly a vexor and i hope you guys enjoy it and i see you guys again